this video, we're going to be looking at the problem of finding the work needed to lift an object when motion is vertical and the force involved is due to gravity. So we're going to be using that force equals mass times acceleration, where here we're going to have G stand for our acceleration due to gravity. So we'll have um, F equals MG, mass times gravity. And we're going to find out that we're going to need calculus in order to find the work done when lifting objects such as ropes, chains, and cables, because different parts of a rope, chain, or cable will be lifted different distances um, when we're trying to lift up the entire rope or the entire chain. So we're going to look at the general case in this video, and then you can look at um, further videos to see some particular examples. So here we say, suppose that we have a chain of length L meters that has constant density, this is linear density, rho, kilograms per meter, hanging vertically from some scaffolding platform at a construction site. And we're interested in determining how we can find the work done in lifting the entire chain up to the platform. So the first thing we need to do is get a diagram representing this particular situation. So we have our platform here and we have our chain hanging down. Um, we need to put some labels on this. So let's let zero be the bottom of the chain and we'll let um, L here represent the top. Okay, so it's like we're putting this against the um, vertical positive Y axis here. So I can talk about the location that a point is on the chain from the bottom of the chain being um, some distance y here. One thing that we want to notice when we're thinking about lifting this chain all the way up to the top is that different points on the chain are going to have to move different distances. So if I have a point at the very top of the chain, that doesn't have to move very far to make it all the way to the top platform, whereas a point down here close to zero has a lot further to travel. So we're not in a situation where we have constant force for this whole problem, but we can think about, like we do in many of our problems, slicing up what it is that we're trying to um, work with here into little pieces and find the work to move um, each one of those little pieces. So the idea here is that I have my chain represented by the interval 0 to L. So I can think about slicing up my chain, slicing up my interval into um, lots of little sub-intervals. So we're going to think about slicing up the chain into n um, pieces here of some equal length delta y. Okay, and we're using the y variable. I'm just thinking about this like the y-axis. So I have some little piece of my chain here. Okay, so that's some sort of delta y here um, between some points yi minus 1 and yi. Okay, so I can think about simplifying this problem instead of talking about the work to lift up the entire chain, lifting up each piece of the chain at a time. So that's really the, the big idea to, um, concept to finding the work done in these lifting problems is to think about lifting your object one little piece at a time. So what's the work to lift the ith slice of our chain here? Okay, so let's think about what goes into finding the work needed. So we know that we have this work formula of force times distance in cases where the, our, our force would be constant. And on one of these little pieces here, um, I know that that little piece is essentially moving the same distance um, because that little interval is so small. So we can treat our work for this particular little piece as being approximately constant. So what about force? Well, we know that the force is computed as mass times gravity. So we have this expanded formula here of mass times gravity times the distance that we have to travel. So what about the mass? Well, we have this information about the density of our chain as rho kilograms per meter. And we know that that little teeny, tiny piece of chain is delta y um, meters long. So we're going to get that our mass here is that density of rho kilograms per meter times delta y meter, so that's giving us the mass units, times gravity, so I can just leave that as g, or remind myself that that's g meters per second squared, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the distance that that piece has to travel. Well, I have some representative point in my interval, like we see in many of these problems, some yi star. So the distance that that point has to travel to get all the way up to the top, where we've let l represent the top of the chain here, 
will be a distance of L minus yi star. So we get this L minus yi star meters that we have to travel. So we notice that we're going to get the right units out of this. So we have this kilograms per meter times meters, that's units of mass, times our units for gravity, that's mass times acceleration, which is our force. And then we have our distance here in terms of meters. Okay, so we can see that our work then will be equal to a limit as n goes to infinity, if we take lots and lots and lots of these little subintervals, a sum of what's happening for the work for each of those slices, a sum from i equals 1 to n of rho times g, just reordering these terms a little bit, rho times g times this L minus yi star times our delta y. Okay, So we see that this is going to equal to the definite integral where we're going from 0 to L, of rho times g times l minus y dy. Okay, so let's just double check that this makes sense in terms of um, the kind of thing that we expect to see in a work problem. We should have things in here representing force times distance. So what components are the force? Well, that's going to be our mass times gravity. So that's these components here. This is representing the force. Okay, where again, remember the dy is representing our, um, our length. The rho piece here is the density, so the density times the length is contributing the mass. And then of course we have g here, which is our acceleration. So those components all together are contributing force. And then of course we have our component here, which is the L minus y, which is the distance. So we do have um, force times distance inside of that integrand, just kind of keeping straight which kind of components are contributing um, which pieces of, of the formula is helpful for thinking about what this means and making sure that you have the right setup there. Um, so this is the general idea that we're going to apply to our various lifting problems. Um, watch the next video to see how we can use this in a particular example.